Hello and welcome to the Canterbury College Student Training COVID-19 Protocols for the Resumption of Academic Learning on Campus. The theme of this presentation will be physical distancing and social responsibility. During this training, we will cover off on what COVID-19 is, the minimum mitigation used at Canada College, the guidelines for safe entry, and additional resources. We will review behaviors that are expected by all who enter the campus, including students and employees. Health and safety training is truly important. It provides everybody with the same foundation and knowledge that is required to be safe while on campus. We have guidelines available for each department and those will be shared individually as you enter each class or lab. We will also review as part of this presentation the basic concepts of transmissibility, symptoms and signs of the illness, and discuss the minimum mitigation required for everybody on campus. Although there might be some mitigation that is employed by everyone on campus, there are still some additional training requirements for when you enter your class or lab space. During this section, we'll talk about what COVID-19 is, why the symptoms are so important, and how the disease is transmissible between one person to another. We will focus on individual behavior and the importance of employing the correct behavior to reduce the likelihood and mitigate the chance of transmissibility. COVID-19 is an illness caused by a novel coronavirus discovered back in December 2019. Coronaviruses are not new. They are a large family of viruses that cause illnesses such as the common cold, bronchitis, pneumonia, or you may have heard this term before, SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. The symptoms from COVID-19 are probably not unlike the ones that you've experienced in the past with a common cold or flu. With COVID-19, they could be mild symptoms or more severe, and the most common symptoms include cough, difficulty breathing, and fever. Those are the ones that are most known to individuals who become symptomatic. There are other more less common symptoms. And if you have at least two of these, sore throat, fatigue, difficulty swallowing, loss of taste or smell, muscle aches, digestive issues like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach pain, headache, runny nose, pink eye, or falling down often, it may be because you are infected with COVID-19. There is an incubation period of COVID-19. An incubation period is the time between catching or being exposed to the virus and beginning to have signs or symptoms of the disease. The World Health Organization estimates that the incubation period for COVID-19 can range from anywhere between one and 14 days, with five days being the most common. The person infected with COVID-19 can transmit it to others without knowing it for up to 14 days. So that's becoming asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic, a person who is not aware that they have the virus or have signs and symptoms of the virus, but are still contagious and transmitting the disease to other people. There are a large number of asymptomatic cases of COVID-19. Estimates suggest that about 80% of the people with COVID-19 have either mild or asymptomatic or no symptoms of the disease, and yet they can still transfer or transmit the disease to other people during that period. Coronavirus is unique because of the way that it is spread between person and person. This usually happens during close contact when physical distancing of six feet is not maintained. This happens when small droplets are produced by either coughing, sneezing, or even talking. The droplets usually fall to the ground or onto surfaces rather than traveling through the air over long distances. Less commonly, people may become infected by touching a contaminated surface and then touching their face. It is most contagious during the first three days after the onset of symptoms, although spread is possible before the symptoms appear. As we talked about earlier, a person may be asymptomatic, not showing any symptoms, and still be contagious, which is the reason why the mask wearing is so important. The most important preventative measures as it relates to COVID-19 and making sure that people don't transfer the virus or become infected with the virus includes physical distancing, good hand hygiene, and self-isolation if 
you have signs or symptoms or suspect that you may be exposed to COVID-19. Essentially, we want all entrants, including students and employees, to follow isolation directives as part of a self-assessment and entry protocol. Do not attend campus if you are ill, even for minor symptoms. Do not attend campus if you have been exposed to another person who is or may be infected with COVID-19. Current measures at Canada College includes department-specific protocols that outline the minimum mitigation required for each area. Currently, all campus locations remain in restricted access, which means only authorized people may enter through a designated entry point. Screening and self-assessment has to be completed on a daily basis using the Canada Safe app. Please download the Canada Safe app and conduct daily self-assessments prior to coming to campus. Promotion of hand and respiratory hygiene with increased amounts of hand sanitizer locations installed throughout the building, including in every class and lab. Enhanced cleaning throughout the building, including high touch surfaces, as well as this health and safety training, which is required for everybody to take. There are a lot of new terms when it comes to COVID-19, including physical distancing, which means to stay six feet or two meters apart from the person next to you. I also want to introduce social responsibility as it is a key component for us at Canada College and outlines all the mitigation in this presentation. The focus is really about us as it applies to the mitigation outlined, including the self-assessment, physical distancing, increasing hand hygiene, sanitization, also the wearing of your Canada supplied non-medical mask or facial covering. You can bring your own facial covering as long as it's not distracting and complies with Health Canada guidelines. Again, it is important to conduct the self-assessment, stay home if you're ill, sanitize your hands, and wear your non-medical mask or facial covering. There is a link provided on the video that you see on this slide. We want everybody to watch this video. It is available on YouTube, and we will provide it as a resource as you are unable to view it in this format. My name is Matt, I'm 19 years old and I had COVID-19. What triggered me to go to the hospital was I became so sick one morning that I coughed up a large amount of blood. I got tested my first day into the hospital and I got the results back the next morning. My family reacted at first in disbelief. Nobody thought I was gonna have it. Not even the doctors and nurses thought I had it. My mom had to leave the second I got diagnosed with COVID and I was actually asleep at the time. So she had to wake me up to break the news. And then within that time period, she was gone within two minutes just gone. As I was in the hospital, my symptoms were still getting worse. I needed to be admitted into the intensive care unit and it was by far the worst I've ever felt in my life. I wouldn't want to wish that upon anyone. After I got to the hospital, I was very scared to give it to anyone just because of how sick I was. So I definitely stayed away from my family and stayed away from everyone that I could. We tend to have that invincibility factor where we don't think we're going to get it or if we do, it's not going to be as bad. And if you look at a case like mine, I'm a healthy 19 year old guy who loves to play sports and I still manage to get the virus. It can happen to anybody. If I could tell one thing to people my age to reduce the risk, it would just be to listen to the public health guidelines because I don't want anyone to have to go through what I did. A message from the Government of Canada. As discussed, every area has a department specific protocol in relation to the minimum mitigation outlined in this presentation which includes requirements for daily self-assessment and screening, increased hand hygiene, limitation of movement, cleaning products available in that area for tools and work areas, and training as part of every plan. Some departments have increased requirements, including the use of additional PPE, department-specific barriers or flow patterns within the area, please follow the department-specific protocol and the requirements listed in every plan. Restricted access outlines two critical steps. One is to conduct a daily self-assessment to identify fit for learning or work to ensure that there are no signs and symptoms of COVID-19, to ensure that you have not been exposed to somebody who may be ill, or to ensure that you have not traveled outside of the country in the past 14 days. Please refrain from entering the campus if you have signs or symptoms. The second key aspect 
is only those who are approved to be on campus for learning or work activities may enter the campus. For students, please enter the campus at the designated access point. The Education Center will be the front doors, Commerce Court campus will be the rear doors, Aviation Center is the side door, and Perry Sound will also be the front door, as outlined in the entry procedures sent to you via email. Upon arrival on campus, proceed to the entry location as described on the slide. If there is a lineup, wait patiently in line and maintain six feet physical distance between you and the person in front of you. Upon entry, use the hand sanitizer station located in the front lobby and confirm your identity with security at the door. Security may ask to see your student ID or your driver's license. Security may also provide some further instruction and confirm that you have completed your self-assessment. Canada College has implemented updated environmental cleaning services as dictated by public health in relation to COVID-19. This includes updated cleaning on high touch surfaces and common areas throughout the buildings. Although Canada College has implemented new measures as dictated by public health cleaning protocols to ensure that the campus remains safe, it is a shared responsibility to include increased sanitization and cleaning of workstations and equipment in between use. Please follow the protocols developed for your department and use only those products designated as approved by Health Canada, which are supplied from each department. One of the most important things that you could do to protect yourself and others from COVID-19 is to increase your hand hygiene. Canada College has installed additional hand sanitizer stations throughout the building, including in every lab and classroom. It is an expectation that you clean your hands before and after using tools within the shops. It is also an expectation that you sanitize your hands upon entry into the building and before departing for the day. Although it may seem simple and a common task to wash your hands, there are certain techniques that public health has issued in relation to ensuring proper hand washing techniques. Follow the instructions on the poster on the next slide. Wearing gloves is typically suited to healthcare applications and not required when entering Canada College or as protection against COVID-19. Hand sanitization actually decreases if you are wearing gloves. Use the hand sanitizer stations, wash your hands on a regular basis, and follow the directions by public health to increase your hand hygiene. A message from the Government of Canada. Physical distancing is an important measure employed by Canada College to ensure everybody's safety while on campus. Please maintain six foot, two meter distance between you and other people. Another important aspect is the use of a facial covering to ensure safety while on campus. It is an expectation that the facial covering provided to you be worn while on campus, especially in common areas, while walking through the campus, the facial covering is a mandatory aspect while in labs and shops as well. This will be enforced by Canada College. There are additional measures in some programs to not only wear a facial covering, but to replace that facial covering with a procedure mask and face shield while working in close proximity to other people within nursing, dental, PSW, or occupational therapy. Facial coverings or non-medical masks do have limitations. It must be used safely and correctly. They need to cover your nose and your mouth. They are recommended in settings where physical distancing cannot be maintained on a consistent basis. At Canada College, they will be used in addition to, not instead of physical distancing. Both are required. 
They do not protect you, the wearer, from contracting COVID-19. This is part of our social responsibility to wear a mask in case we are unknowingly infected by COVID-19, as we don't want to spread the virus while on campus. There are proper techniques on how to wear a non-medical mask or facial covering. Those two terms mean the same thing, and Canada College will supply you with a non-medical mask to wear while on campus. As a reminder, you can bring in your own non-medical mask to wear as long as it complies with Health Canada guidelines and that it is not distracting. There is a link provided down below that shows you how to wear the mask properly, and we have provided that as another resource to watch via YouTube. Essentially, clean your hands with soap and water or sanitize your hands for at least 15 seconds prior to putting on your mask. Make sure it fits snugly and there's no gaps between your mask and your face and that it covers your nose and mouth. Secure the ear loops so that it is comfortable and doesn't hinder breathing or your vision. Always avoid touching the front of your mask or facial covering while wearing it. And wear it as long as it is comfortable. You are allowed to take breaks, go for walks and leave the campus. It is also permitted to remove the mask if you are in your personal space, like an office. Do not share your mask and keep it clean by washing it on a regular basis. As outlined in the video, there are certain techniques to make sure that your non-medical facial covering is used properly. Please maintain your mask and clean it on a regular basis. It can be put directly into the washing machine and dryer. Wash with other items using a hot cycle with laundry detergent and dry thoroughly. Regular washing of your mask is required. To continue to limit the spread of COVID-19, here's how to wear a non-medical mask or face covering when physical distancing is difficult. Start by washing your hands with soap for 20 seconds. Then pick up the mask by the ties or loops, place it over your nose and mouth, and secure it behind your head or ears. From there, adjust the mask to ensure your nose and mouth are fully covered, so there are no gaps. Then wash your hands again. While wearing the mask, avoid touching it or touching your face, and wash your hands if you do. Once you're done using the mask, remove it by the ties or loops without touching the front. Fold the outer parts of the mask together and place it in a clean bag to wash later. Or if it's a single-use mask, throw it out in the garbage. Then wash your hands right away. Change your mask whenever it becomes moist, dirty, or damaged. Don't leave the mask hanging from your neck or ears. And remember, always wash your hands after using a mask. When you wear a mask, you're protecting others around you. But a mask alone will not prevent the spread of COVID-19. So continue frequent hand washing, practicing physical distancing, and staying home if you're sick. Let's protect each other. Learn more at canada.ca slash coronavirus. A message from the Government of Canada. Always remember to sneeze or cough into your elbow. And yes, you can cough or sneeze into your facial covering as well. If you use your hands with a tissue or to cover your face, always sanitize your hands after coughing or sneezing. Never cough or sneeze towards somebody else near you. Safe behavior definitions will be used at Canada College to outline the critical steps required to mitigate the risk of COVID-19. Safe behaviors are just observable acts or actions that we could witness and provide feedback on, most of which have already been discussed in this presentation, in including conducting daily self-assessment, staying home if you're ill, maintaining physical distancing, increasing your hand washing and hand sanitization in between tool use, and wearing of a non-medical facial covering. These observations will be conducted by Canada College employees. They will be anonymous and non-disciplinary. They will be used to increase your safe behavior and provide feedback when the mitigation methods are not used. As mentioned on the previous slide, safe behaviors are just observable actions that we can define and provide feedback on. Most times they are simple actions that we could do without intervention such as maintaining six foot distance or two meters from other people at all times. While working in a lab or shop, we will restrict the number of people in any area and be mindful of the amount of available space between you and other people. When entering the cafeteria, maintain the furniture arrangements 
and don't bring chairs from one table to another, and observe the maximum number of occupants. Do not over-exceed it. So if a table is full, do not try to crowd into one area. When meeting with another person, instead of shaking hands, just say hello from a distance to maintain your physical distance and hand hygiene. These are observable actions that we will provide feedback on. As outlined, Canada College employees will be providing feedback on your actions and behaviors as it relates to the mitigation measures for COVID-19. This could be from a faculty member, security, or another staff member of Canada College. These coaching sessions are designed to increase your safety. As mentioned, during these observation sessions, they will be anonymous and non-disciplinary. However, if somebody on campus is observed doing something in contravention of these minimum mitigation measures, disciplinary action up to and including dismissal from the campus location can be employed. Follow the measures. Our social responsibility dictates that we take care of each other in relation to COVID-19. Use your non-medical mask, conduct daily self-assessments, increase your hand hygiene, and maintain physical distancing whenever possible. There are a few other important areas that we have yet to discuss. I want to remind you that the Health Center at the Education Center is currently available by appointment only. Please visit the website for updates and for contact information. Drinking water fountains shall be used for water bottle filling only. Avoid drinking directly from the fountains. Always use the hand sanitizing station before and after. Cafeterias will be open during specific times outlined for each program area. The cafeteria will not be serving food. It is designed only for consumption of brought in bagged food. Do not use takeout food from local area restaurants and bring back to the cafeteria for food consumption. It will not be permitted as per public health guidelines. Washrooms will be designated as max capacity for each area. Follow the max capacity signs for the elevators as well as the washrooms. Hallways, please always stand to the right and allow for physical distancing. If there are directional signage in that hallway, please follow them. Updated communication will be posted to the Canada College COVID-19 dedicated webpage, which can also be accessed via the Canada Safe app. If you have any concerns or questions, speak to your faculty member or program coordinator. If you see or witness something that is not acceptable, you can also contact security. Visit the website on a regular basis to update yourself on the latest communication. Posters will be placed at all entrances to remind you of the minimum mitigation we discussed in this presentation. As part of your daily self-assessment, reporting is an important aspect. If you become ill and are unable to attend the campus, you must notify your academic lead or supervisor immediately. Employees can use the reporting form and also inform health and safety and ODTM immediately. If you are unwell after attending campus, you must also inform your supervisor or academic lead. You may also contact security who will find an appropriate room for isolation purposes if you are on campus. Safe transport will be provided sanitization of the area and the individuals will be employed afterwards. If you are unwell after leaving campus, reporting is also required. Please contact again your academic lead or supervisor immediately. Your mental health is very important at Canada College. There are many services available to you as a student. You can contact student services who continue to provide support virtually or on campus during the pilot period in August during the resumption of academic learning on campus. Remember to take breaks, go for walks, enjoy your day. This is an opportunity for us to get back to our regular routine while employing some additional measures to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Always maintain a clean campus. Never dispose of your disposable mask onto the ground. Use the garbage bins provided. If you are a smoker, use the designated new COVID-19 smoking areas and dispose of your cigarette butt into the appropriate container. Do not leave cigarette butts or litter on the ground. Thank you for listening to the presentation and thank you in advance for implementing the measures as outlined. If you have any questions, refer to the dedicated COVID-19 webpage, talk to your academic lead or supervisor 
and contact security if required. And most importantly, welcome back.